If you've gone through a breakup or a divorce and you're ready to move forward, I'm Dr. Lisa Summerauer. I want you to realize this is your life, your journey. Divorce is not a destination. So I want to welcome everybody to today's show. This show for me, for some reason, is just a little bit more fun um, because we're talking about going back to single. You see how excited I am. And before I do that, let me just go ahead and introduce myself. I'm Dr. Lisa Summerauer. And this is my podcast, Divorce is Not a Destination. I also have a program uh, called Divorce is Not a Destination. And I do coaching for women who have gone through a breakup or divorce, or they're on the brink of one. So I work with women who are successful. They are in high profile positions, going through a divorce or a breakup uh, on the brink of one. And they are looking for community support and confidentiality while they work through some things. And the four primary areas that I work with women on are being accountable, learning how to embrace accountability, because I think it's one of the most empowering things you can do, and dealing with accountability um, and alignment, uh, learning how to bring the alignment back into your life so that the way you're showing up in the world is actually in alignment with the things that are important to you, learning how to communicate with uh, confidence and no guilt. And then the fourth thing is trust, learning how to trust yourself again. I want people, primarily women that I work with, to be able to trust themselves so that they understand they are the person to make the best and healthiest decisions for themselves. And this podcast is an offshoot of that educational program and uh, the coaching work that I do. So today we're going to be talking about being single again, being back to single, 10 steps, maybe might be some bonus ones in here, 10 steps to moving gracefully forward into being single. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with this. And as I was uh, looking this information up and researching and writing things down for the tonight segment, it occurred to me, you know, we've all been single before. So it's not like we're going back to something that we've never experienced. So sometimes it's just um, another way of looking at this so that your perspective can shift. Because if you have been with somebody for a long time or uh, you've been in a really, really serious relationship and you just got or you've been in several relationships and you just have not really had time to be with yourself by yourself, then it might be a little scary or a little uncomfortable. Or for some people, they say it's even embarrassing because they were the person who was always coupled up. They had been in a long-term relationship or a couple of long-term relationships and their friends sort of look to them as the person who always has a man or always has a woman or is, is just, you're such a great couple. And now that you are single again, for some people, they say it's been embarrassing because they have to adjust to a new normal uh, for themselves and for how people deal with them. So hopefully uh, going through tonight's show will just give you a little bit more confidence and get you a little bit more excited about all the things that are possible when you go back to being single, these 10 tips. So I know that the relationship failing or not going the distance, whatever the distance was for you, might be something that is is sad and depressing, but you can take advantage of this, this new relationship status, you know, by learning from the things that didn't work for you and by recreating a new, uh, a new life experience. So the first thing is going to be just that. It's going to be learn from that experience because every failed relationship has an opportunity. Hey, Wanda, uh, we're at number one of our 10. Every failed relationship, um, or even I, I, sometimes I don't even like to use the word fail, but you know, when we've been divorced, it, it, you know, you're supposed to get married and it's supposed to be forever and ever and ever. And so we can say that it failed, but it's okay. We can say fail. Every failed relationship there is something you can learn from the experience with that person about yourself, about the kind of person you do or don't want to be with. So what was that thing? And for those of you who did my end of year review, I also have an end of relationship or divorce review that, that my uh, clients can take, but you can use your end of anything, use this to review it, to find out what did you learn, right? Because there's usually something that happens that, that, was that moment for you that you realized this isn't, this isn't working for me. And right there is a learning moment because it just told you, I identified something that's going on here. That's not acceptable for me. And maybe it's something that I had been accepting, right? Or maybe it's something I didn't even know was going to be a problem that I couldn't deal with or didn't want to deal with. So 
figure out what that is, figure out where you might've made some mistakes. So before you get into another relationship, you have an opportunity to kind of work through that kind of thing. So use those first couple of weeks. If this, if your relationship ended re recently, you can use these first couple of weeks or months, take whatever time you need to take and really examine different aspects of your relationship and see the things that you like, the things that were working, the things that you just decided, mm, I'm going to ignore these things and see if things get better or see if they go away and they didn't or the things that you were doing that may have created the bigger problem in the relationship. Sometimes we got to really be, be honest enough to look at those things and decide, yeah, you know, I really wasn't ready to be in a relationship right then. And I wasn't ready to make that kind of commitment. And I should have been more forthright with that. And so whatever that is, take an opportunity and figure out what it is that you can learn from the relationship. Number two is let go. And I mean, let go. Now, if you have children, if you have young children, they're not old enough, they're not adults so that they can have their own relationship with, with your ex. But if you have children, you obviously are going to be in situations where you're probably going to have to see your ex, speak to your ex and deal with your ex to resolve things or come to some sort of co-parenting agreement. But I'm talking to people who don't have to do that. If you don't have to be involved with your ex, uh, I am going to tell you to cut off as much communication and access as you possibly can so that you have time to make a, an adjustment gracefully and quickly. And a lot of people struggle with this one, um, not necessarily because they have a problem with it, because for most people, when they hear that, they're like, yeah, because I don't really need to speak to this person. But sometimes it's your friends and family that are like, oh, well, you should be strong enough that you should be able to talk to them. And you, you know, when you really get over it, if you're, if you were really over them, it wouldn't matter if you, eh. okay. So I'm the person who I want to have that last conversation. Like I want to be able to have one of those, I don't know if it's closure or just tie it up in a neat little bow and then send the box out onto the ocean and let it sail away. I prefer to have that kind of an end uh, regardless of how it ended. And if I don't get that, I feel like, okay, something just got cut off, but I've gotten better. Um, I still move on. I still get things done. My mother will tell you, I will still get creative in the midst of being depressed and sad and crying all over the place. I might be building a shelving unit while that's all ha happening. But, um, in terms of cutting off, this is something that I have really come to believe could be the healthiest thing that a lot of people do that we typically don't do to this extent. So what does cutting that off mean? It means don't set yourself up into situations where you're going to accidentally, for those of you who are listening only on a podcast and you can't see me, I'm doing air quotes, where you can accidentally keep running into your ex. Just stop doing it. No matter how fabulous you think you look and you want them to see what they're missing, forget all of that. Just stop putting yourself in situations where you're going to just somehow bump into them, especially if this is emotionally difficult for you. You may not even be at the point where you want to go let them see how fabulous you look now. You may not even be there because you may be walking around with rollers in your hair, uh, mascara wearing off from three days ago in the same sweatpants that you've had on for four days, refusing to shower. You may be in that place. And so you're praying that you don't run into them. But you can even make some changes in your schedule because at this point, it is really about what do you need to do? Hey, Monica, what do you need to do to feel better about being single again? And this is no longer about trying to impress your ex or your friends because they think you're so tough and you ha handle everything. You are allowed to have whatever emotional, I'm going to call it a mini breakdown, but you need to have whatever emotional um, experience you need to have to get through this. So if it's early and you need to maybe switch the time that you go to the grocery store, then do that. Don't set yourself up to, like I said, air quotes, accidentally keep running into your ex if emotionally you are not ready to do that. And this is you getting yourself in a place to be back to single. Like I said, we've all been single before. So if you go back to it, it's not like it's new territory, but you get to redefine what it looks like for yourself now. But I'm going to give you some other things you can do when we talk about just discontinue the communication until you feel comfortable. And you may never need to go back to that, that, that communication. I don't remember who it was. They said, 
every relationship is for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And yours might have been for a reason. We just talked about the first thing. What can you learn? And maybe it was for a season. And, and then when that season ends, you don't have to cycle back through it. So cut off. Let me tell you something. This phone right here, I had no idea. I had no idea how much information your phone has on you that it can just regurgitate to you at will without you having anything to do with it. So if you are at that place where you need to let go of your ex, go through this thing and delete those pictures, those videos, um, go to the phone. If, if you don't need the number, take the number out. If you do feel like for some reason you're going to still need to keep in touch with this person, go in there and just have fun and take their name and put it in all lower caps. Matter of fact, just do the initials, lowercase initials. You're just going to make all of this smaller. You're going to deal with it in small pieces. But the pictures, this is a real thing. So my last breakup, I would wake up some mornings, mine and my business with my phone, and I would look and, you know, iPhone likes to give you these little video stories to remind you of something that happened two years ago or three years ago. And for the love of all things in heaven, for some reason, I kept getting these little memories of me and my ex. And so, yeah, I had to go in and make sure I cleaned my phone. So do what you need to do so that you are not reliving things that you don't even have control over. You don't need your phone reminding you of a relationship that you're no longer in. So think about the photographs, go through your home, do yourself a favor. I know there may be one or two pictures from a vacation that you think is so great or maybe family members, but let me tell you about a kind of recent experience. It was last year. Met a, met a nice gentleman, lovely gentleman, wonderful to talk to, had some great conversations, came over here and met my mom, went to the safari park. You guys know I love the safari park. It's my little special place. Had a nice day at the safari park, and then he decided he was going to invite me to dinner. So, you know, after I did, Monica, I, I, I hey, Monica, I, I should have called somebody like Monica, but I tell people I just get a drone that follows them around for two days so I can track people before I, I go meet them someplace. Um, but I went over to his place for dinner, and the gentleman still had pictures of his ex hanging up in different places around his home. And I thought, well, that's a little peculiar. Um, yeah. So take your pictures down because when you get, to, when you get to the place, Monica, that's a, that's a, that's another conversation. That's when, when the, when the women, when the grown women are talking, um, when you get to that place where the relationship is over and you think you're ready to start dating or entertaining company again, I will just tell you from experience, there is something that happens when you're sitting thinking you're having a conversation with someone and their digital camera, their digital photo thing is rolling pictures and every now and then one of them with their ex pops up. Yeah, don't do that to another human being because that is a clear sign you have no business dating right now. That's what that actually means. You should just put a poster on there that actually says, you've seen this picture of my ex, you now know I'm not ready to date. You can finish having dessert and we don't have to see each other again because that's kind of what that signal for me. So check your iPhone and make sure you get rid of those photographs and the videos and all of the things that might accidentally be popping up. Do the same thing with your computer, whatever it is that you need to, to clean up. Third thing, forgive. Now people will tell you that forgiveness is not for them, it's for you. And, and I do believe that forgiveness doesn't mean you forget. It doesn't mean that you need to be at a place where you can sit and have coffee and tea with them. I have forgiven people and turn down coffee dates um, because I, I didn't need that for myself. And so don't put yourself in what I would call harm's way because there's emotional harm that you can do to yourself by continuing to put yourself in the line of fire from someone who had already mistreated you anyway, or just from you being able to do a really good job of self-care and taking care of your emotional needs and your emotional needs at that point may not be to be around the person that you just split from because you need to heal. Give yourself time to heal. So you can forgive, forgive them and forgive yourself. Because like I said earlier, you may have done some things that you're not proud of. So take that time and learn what they are and then forgive yourself. There's no point in carrying all of that baggage around with you because it's just weight that you don't need. Hey, Lynn, it's weight that you don't need to carry anymore. And it's stuff you don't want to take on. And I'm not even going to say into your next relationship. You don't want to have it walking around with you. You don't need that on your spirit. You don't need that on your mind. So figure out what you need to do to forgive them 
and forgive yourself, right? Take good care of you. And so um, I said earlier, you know, you may be in the frame of mind right now where you just don't feel like taking a shower and your sweats for day number three are still working for you. Um, just take the shower anyway. Yeah. Take the shower anyway. My mom and I often walk around here and joke when we have our pajama weekends, one of us will say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to take a shower whether I need one or not. So get yourself in the frame of mind where just go ahead and take the shower. And since you're going to take the shower, go ahead and, and do the hair and put a little lip gloss on. I got Monica on here. She would tell you, put the, Monica, put the diamond studs in, right? Right. Put some nice jewelry on. Um, go get a manicure and a pedicure. Do something good for yourself, even though you feel like you have to drag yourself to do it. The longer you sit and in the muckety muck, the longer you're going to feel like muckety muck. So you need to figure out what are the things that you need to do and keep it simple. You don't have to be elaborate because depending on where you are, you don't have the energy. You may not have the energy to do a lot, but do something. And bathing is usually a really good place to start. Just a good old scrub down. Um, and what the heck, shave your legs while you're in there. Uh, so take care of yourself and whatever that looks like for you. How about a, a day at the gym, a couple of hours at the gym, 30 minutes of walking outside. Um, matter of fact, you can walk around your living room, do something so that you get your blood circulating so that you can get your energy up. And so that you break the routine that you're, you're, you've started for yourself. So you're going to forgive yourself. So we're going to learn some things. You're going to let go, forgive yourself, take care of yourself. And then we want you to get your life in order. I got Monica coming on here. What you doing, lady? How you doing? Can you hear, can you hear me? There she is. Yeah, can you hear me now? You're going, you're going, you're, yeah, you just came back. You were going in and out. <laughs> okay. So Hi. you can hear me. How you doing? Yes, I'm I good. hear you good yeah, now. How you doing? Hi, so, um, I'm, I'm going to say this, sweetie. Go and get yourself a Brazilian wax and get that kitty cat ready. Get that kitty cat ready for the next person in line. Did you hear me? See, you know I need to have a five second delay when I see her come on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she girl, you know I got to keep it real. Get, I'm telling get you. The, get the nair out. Do they still sell nair? Do what you girl. need to do. Pamper I get you. a wax every four weeks. When I tell you, like everybody get their little mani petty, mm -hmm. I get wax, girl. I keep it ready and ready. Okay. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> my mom is down. My mother is down there cracking up right now. <laughs> so, so this falls under the take care of yourself. And if you've never had a wax, perfect time to try one. Girl, it's liberating. Health it's and wellness is liberating. It, it really is. It's a real thing. So, so I look, folks, if you need tips on how to take care of yourself, just tip over into Monica's show because I know her list is going to be longer than mine because <laughs> she, she truly has it down to a science. But it, but it's true. And especially, you know, you know what it's like after that breakup. You just feel you some depending on the breakup. You just don't yeah. feel like yourself, you know, and you don't have yeah. the energy and you're tired and you're trying to process. And sometimes it's day three and you realize I haven't had a glass of water or a shower. Like you have just avoided all liquids except yep. maybe some wine. And so figure out what you need to do. Sit down. If you had the routine, this is a good time to call your manicure, pedicure, your wax person, call your girlfriend that used to go with you, your, whoever, and say, hey, um, just make an appointment and come get me tomorrow. But you and, know what, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Lisa, I'm serious. I have to share this with you and then I'm going I'm to be quiet. Mm -hmm. But the reason that I said that, I, I, I do, I get waxed, but one of my girlfriends went through a divorce and her husband kept asking her to wax and she wouldn't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So after, the, after they got divorced and... You know, they, they went through their thing and then they finally got a chance. And she said, I just need resolution. And he said to her, I kept telling you what I liked. I kept telling you what I wanted you to do and you wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to me because when I asked her, I said, why didn't you do it? And she, you know, she was like, I'm so conservative. And, you know, uh -huh. I, 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 was, I was like, girl. And I guarantee you, whoever he went now, that girl went and got that kitty cat waxed. I said, look here. <laughs> You said she's bald as an eagle. 
but Girl, let me Sonya tell you. Sitting. I know Lynn is sitting here going, what in the world? <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, it's, and it is a, to each his own or her, or her own. You need to figure out what he, she, they, them, those like. That's um, it. And, and make that's those all, compromises. That's all I'm because, saying. That's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. Just come, yep. out your, come out your thing. Learn yep. something new, something different. Whatever it is, if you, you, you know, if you don't like color, get your nails, get, girl, get candy apple fire girl. engine red. You know, I Fine. mean, just come out, come out of your thing. You know what I'm saying? Experiment <laughs> with that. It, experiment, you go. experiment with it. Thank you, ma'am. You All right. I'm, I'm going to be quiet. Keep going, girl. We'll, we'll be you here. If you, if you ain't doing nothing, just hang out for a minute. I'll just mute yourself and hang in there. So we okay. got to take care of yourself. And that could mean, like we just said, that could mean a lot of things. It could mean many things to, to many people. So figure out what that means for you. And yeah, experiment with some things that you haven't tried. Step step outside the box. Make your box bigger. Don't You don't have to step out. Make the wall, spread the walls of your box out a little bit more. So yeah, you never got a complete shave. Try it once and see, see if it works for you. Um, you get your nails done neutral every this time, go get some stripes or something painted on them. Just tell your manicurist to have fun. Now the next one, number five, get your life in order. Get your life in order. Are you working at a job that you love or are you working someplace where you it's drudgery every day? Because if you are already having relationship issues, you just ended a relationship, it's even harder to get up and go to a job that you don't like. So what are the things in your life that are out of order? How are your finances? Are there things that you want to be able to do for yourself that you don't do because you can't afford them? So maybe you need to get your finances in order. Are you feeling healthy? Whatever healthy is for you, whatever shape you're in, are you in the best shape that you could be in? Or have you been neglecting yourself physically? Um, you want to be in a place where you can feel good about your life for yourself, not for somebody else. They should be extra. I had a, I had a friend and I, we never even met. This was in the early days of meeting people online and met this guy. And we just started talking. We just bonded as friends. And he said, Lisa, he said, I'm going to tell you something that I tell all my female friends. He says, when you meet a man, and this is for men too. So put it in whatever you need to put it in. So it relates to you. Um, when you meet a man, he should be enhancing your life from day one. If he is not ha- enhancing your life day one, don't give him day two. Don't give him day two. He said, you haven't lost anything, but you're, you're already looking right now, sitting there, having a conversation, spending time with somebody. If you don't feel like it's an enhancement, then why bother? This is not charity that we're doing. It's your life that you're living. So you should be getting your life in order so that when you meet someone that has gotten their life in order, you're enhancing each other's experiences. You're not, oh, Monica, woo, go and listen to Monica's show from Wednesday, Tuesday, whatever night that was, you complete me. Remember that from Jerry Maguire? She did a whole show on You Complete Me and I was trying to find like buttons and everything else to hit on that doggone show because this is this, this is that. You want to have a great life to share with someone else. My mother used to say it like this. You're not, I didn't raise you to be a circus clown. Now, the first time she said that, I was like, my mom is high. Um, but what she meant was, I didn't raise you to be a circus clown. It is not your job to make somebody else happy. They need to bring happy to the party. They need to bring all of their happy with your happy, and then y'all can find joy together. But it's not my job. Yeah, it's not my job to make another human being happy. I think a big challenge for so many of us is we haven't even figured out what makes us happy. We don't know what sparks our joy. And that's why we're looking for it everywhere else. Because if you really have it internally, you're not looking for it externally. And once you start look here, having Look to be- here, Pastor. Look here, Pastor Lisa. <laughs> look at here, Pastor Lisa. Don't you preach on a Thursday, girl. Come, you better say come, it. Come say on it. Now, y'all, it's the truth. If you are constantly, I used to tell one of my nieces this, if, if you are constantly needing to be va- um, validated and to be inspired and motivated from an external source, that's not going to sustain you because you don't have control over the external sources. If this is coming from inside you, your higher power. Now, you know, for me, it's Jesus. Y'all call it whatever. If you need it to be Kermit, the boot, whatever, whatever you need, I'm going to support you in that. But have a higher power and make sure that is where you're getting your source from. That's your source. But you need to be bringing this from an internal place, because I think a part of a part of what's happening 
is we are getting so conditioned to all of this stuff, social media and trying to keep up with Kardashians and everybody else that we have forgotten to tap into what God already gave us. And that's where your source should come from. That's where your joy should be springing from. Hey, Sonia, thank you. So, so make sure you have gotten your life in order and whatever that means for you. Are you living where you want to live? Are you taking vacations? Do you have a passport? Because my family, that's probably one of the first things for us. If you don't have a passport, we're probably not going to be able to be friends long because we will have left you somewhere at a port. Would so, you please say that again? Say it for the people <laughs> up there in, in the, the bleachers. In the back, please. in the bleachers, passport. In the bleachers. Passport. Yes. Get a passport. Travel Ooh, off of this Jesus continent. Man. Travel off of this continent. Go someplace where you don't speak the language on purpose. Yeah, do it. Um, I just talked to my sister today. She and her boyfriend are looking at doing a month in Spain. Now she's going to catch up with us because we're going to, 12 of us, I think, mine, we'll be in Spain and Portugal and, and uh, Morocco um, this in another two months. And she may be there spending a month. And, and this is because my parents taught us to travel. But folks, I will tell you, it is one of the most rewarding things. So getting your life in order could include doing traveling that you've always wanted to do that you didn't do before. So that's number five. Number six, let's remodel. Excuse me, let's remodel. Now I have a, a program. I got I think I got to change the name. I, it was the Clutter Cleanse program. I'm going to move it to Clean, Clear for Clean and Clear for Clarity. Because I really believe that how you live in your spaces is how you show up in your life. Now you can hide it. We all know people that hide it. You go into their main part of their house and everything looks great, but they got eight junk drawers and you can't go in their bedroom, right? Or you open the trunk of their car and the whole life pops out of it. So, and Lisa, so I, Lisa, right. you, Lisa, see, now, see, that's why I don't like to come to your show because I try to sit in the audience and be quiet. Come on, come on. girl, you be hitting it. So, okay, so let me tell you, one of my girlfriends, right? She fabulous 50, always bitching, complaining, moaning. Girl, I can't find a man. Mm -hmm. Ain't no man. Child, I went to her house, Lisa, and my hand on 20 Bibles. Went in her bedroom, and Lisa, I couldn't see the floor. See? Couldn't tell whether she had hardwood, carpet, tile, plastic. Girl, mm -hmm. she had stuff a foot thick clothes, magazines, books, boxes. I said, girl, ain't no man finna come in here. I said, mm -hmm. it is nothing sexy about this room at all. Are you kidding me? And she was like, well, I just don't understand. And I, you know, they'll come and they'll visit, but they, I said, girl, if they ever see this bedroom, they're going to come visit and never come back. What is I, wrong with you? I can't believe she invited somebody. I mean, and, and that's the thing. Now it's interesting. You can meet, you know, people like this and they're amazing people. But when you realize that, there's something about it that you're not surprised. It now it like makes sense. You're like, oh, okay, this is the problem. Let's see, let's see Lisa. I come from that school where my mother. See, my mother, boy, she taught me a lot. But my, I watched how my mother would just literally, and I hate to say this, it's gonna sound horrible. You come like, oh, girl, we need another show. But she, <laughs> I watched how she would literally seduce my father through the beauty and the environment of our home. Mm. And I'm the same way, girl. My bedroom is nothing to play with. I, I when I tell you, okay, yeah, I, I love candles. I have beautiful furniture. I've got the the, the beautiful sheets. The bed is sexy. Everything's sexy, <gasps> including me, girl. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, so look, I heard you the other I night think, talk about going to bed with your diamond studs on. Baby, I don't play with them. Okay, but Lisa. <laughs> That's where yeah, your dreams scary. live. Your dreams live. Your yes. goals live. Your spirit is there. So how you going to wake yes. up in a room and it look like the three stooges mm. live there? I mean, come on now. It's a, it's a sight and a fright. It Create an environment that is indicative of how you want to show up in the world. Because I believe, That's like it. I said, how you live is how you're living. If I That's walk it. Into Keep the going, spaces, girl. I'm going to yeah. shut up. I'm going to shut up. <laughs> If I walk into the spaces where you spend time, your office, your your bedroom, your your home, any any room in your home. And so I'm going to say remodel, remodel. If you're not going to take my course, remodel, figure out which room you want to start with. You don't have to make it extravagant, but the first thing you need to do is get the place straightened up.
So you need to, I call it, I, I tell people there's a blessing in the purge. There is a blessing in the purge. You just got to be willing to let go of stuff that you don't use, can't wear, don't know why you have it, didn't know you had it until you lifted it up out from underneath a pile of stuff. Get rid of that stuff. If it's still in good enough shape to be used, bless the Goodwill or the Salvation Army because you could be blessing an entire family with the stuff that you've got stockpiled in your home. And unless you're a hoarder where you really need like a therapist to help you, and we know that there are shows showing people like that. Most people, that's not really where they are. We just got lazy. People just got lazy or they got depressed or they had a life change. They broke up with their, their spouse and they just stopped caring. And so you got to care enough to want to remodel. So just figure out a space. If it's your, your bedroom, let it be the bedroom. Say, I'm just going to work on getting this one room in order. And that means you purge everything out that you don't need, get rid of it. And then you're going to do a nice deep clean. And then you're going to organize and you're going to put like my dad, everything in its place, everything in its place. So, um, my dad was the, was the person that we called the clean freak in my family. He was in the Marine Corps. Then he was in the United States army. And then he was a Philadelphia police officer. And he cleaned better than we have a saying here. It's not just clean. Is it Perry clean? Because that's how good, <laughs> that's how good he cleaned. But there's something about walking into a clean space or walking into your bedroom and the bedrooms made. So I'm going to give you this one and then I'm going to move on to seven. If you have ever gone to a hotel or if you went to a hotel or an Airbnb or a bed and breakfast, and you got your keys and you looked at the lobby and it was all beautiful and the service was wonderful. And you get up to your suite on the umpteenth floor and you open the door and it just has a smell like they even, it's got an air, it just smells clean. And then you turn the corner and the bed is not made. The bed's not made. The sheets are all rumpled. You could tell that they didn't change them from the, how are you going to feel in that moment? It's just that you're going to be down at that front desk or calling the front desk so quickly that you will forget that you left your luggage in the hallway. And so why is it that you don't want your bedroom? For me, I tell folks, I want my bedroom to feel as good as any hotel that I stay in. The best, the most comfortable bed I sleep in should not be at a hotel. It just shouldn't. And I love traveling and I love a nice hotel, but I make sure that my bed feels as good as any hotel bed that I'm going to get in to the point where if I've stayed in one that felt better than mine, I'll call down and find out where they got their linens or their sheets or their pillows or something, because it might be time for me to change mine. So figure out what your remodel needs to be. Here's a fun one. Find a hobby, find a hobby, find a new hobby. So what were some of the things that you did before you were in your relationship? that you stopped doing, that you loved, or what were some things that you wanted to do in the relationship and your partner wasn't interested? Or maybe you just didn't have time because of the nature of the relationship. So figure out what those things are and get a piece of paper and write them down. And you can call it a bucket list, a to-do list, your dream, sh dream sheet, whatever you need to call it, but give yourself some things to do that are just different and fun and new and exciting, or it might be going back to something old. I am reading, uh, listening to actually Michelle Obama's uh, newest book. And she talks about her knitting and how she got into knitting and how, what a joy and how relaxing and how wonderful it is to be able to knit. Now I've been sewing for 50 years, over 50 years actually now. I started sewing when I was about nine years old with my grandmother. And so for me, that's kind of my, that's one of my happy places. If I get to the point where it's time to clear the dining room table off and turn it into a sweatshop, I'm going to have my sewing machine, my surging machine, my laptop on the corner, because I'll put something on that I can watch. And I'm going to sew until I get it out of my system. And then I'll put all my equipment back away. So figure out what it is that you can do or learn to do that gives you a hobby. There, there is a joy and something so beautifully empowering about making something with your hands. And I, I have believed that for years, that if we could get our young, young ladies and men back into sewing and wood shop in schools, and Wanda is on here, when I tell you, now look folks, you know I will build something. I built this shelf right there. That floor to ceiling bookshelf, yes, I built that. I painted them walls. Matter of fact, I laid that floor. But Wanda, this woman that you see down here clapping, she's a carpenter for real. Like, I mean, Jesus would probably hire Wanda if he came back and needed help. 
this woman makes beds and dressers and kitchen cabinets and I'm good with some, you know, this bookcase shelf behind me. I built this. So I, I'll do some stuff. I'll experiment. I, I'll, I will risk messing something up to learn how to do something. But Wanda is nobody to play with. So she can attest to this. There's something about making something with your hands. And I really believe that if we got our young women and, and young, young men, high school, junior high school, if we got them to create something with their hands, like I, I used to say this. A young girl who goes to school wearing an outfit that she made, it's going to be hard for a knucklehead to flatter her. It's going to be hard because she knows what she's capable of. She already knows what she brings to the table. So you telling me I'm cute is like, okay, yeah, I made all of this. What what up? What what you got? And so for for young men to feel that kind of empowerment to be able to walk into a room and walk out with whether it's sewing something or a piece of furniture that they made, it's I still get a buzz off of it at, at 60. I just get a delight in watching something come together to the whole idea of creating something. So figure out what a hobby might be for you. What is it that, that you can create? Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's poetry. Maybe you challenge yourself to go to an open mic night and read one of your poems to a room full of strangers. What are you going to do? Get embarrassed? They don't know you. You're going to go home. They, these people may never see you again, but you may find out that you are amazingly good in front of an audience and that you brought all kinds of people joy. Now, next one, number eight, enjoy being single. This is not, oh, I'm single again. No, it's I'm single. I'm single. I am single, single and loving it, single and loving it. You came into the world single. You're going to leave the world single. If you get some time in between where you get to be single, enjoy it. And I want you to do this. Get a piece of paper and think back over your relationship and think about the things that you wanted to do that you didn't do because you weren't single. There may have been some. Think about things that you wanted to do that your partner didn't want to do. And now you don't have to ask permission or see if they're okay with it. So figure out what that is because you really need to get your mind okay with being single instead of having your mind only focused on finding the next person you're going to be with. I think we could do with a little bit more of a gap in between one and the other so that we have time to figure out who we are and what we like. If you've been in a relationship for a while, um, there are probably some things that you liked before that you don't like anymore. And there are some things that you like now that you don't even know about. Like you might like getting waxed. Go ahead, Monica. You might like getting waxed and you don't know because you've never done it. So figure out what does it mean to be single for you? You know, how does it feel? And maybe right now it, you, it doesn't feel right because it's not comfortable because you haven't been single that long. But give yourself time and see how does this feel for me? What are the disadvantages of being in a relationship? Think about that. Avoid, like I said, don't start another relationship right away. Enjoy this time to be free. Figure out what are the things that you want to do. I'm going to recommend a couple. Um, take yourself to dinner at a really nice restaurant by yourself. Go to dinner to a really nice restaurant by yourself. Call and book a reservation. Years ago, I was in LA and I wanted to go to Glorious. And I booked the reservation for Glorious and I get to the to the, to the door and I walk in and, and the person at the desk says, uh, I gave him my name. I said, I have a reservation. And without thinking, he said, oh yeah, you were the one that booked the reservation for one. And I was like, well, yeah. And you can announce that to the rest of the restaurant. So they seated me. That was the night I met, um, uh, Rolanda Watts was sitting next to me at a table with a girlfriend, her, and we had a great conversation but I have no problem going to dinner alone. I like going to the theater alone. I like going to the movies alone. Become your best date. Become your best date. If you get really good at being your best date, when you start dating again, you will know where the bar is. You will have set a standard for yourself. I, I had a young woman at a bank I used to go to when I lived in Indiana and I was in there doing my banking and she was talking about her birthday was coming up. She was getting ready to turn like 23. And she said she really wanted to do some really fun things with her friends, but there were places she didn't want to go until she had a date, until she had a boyfriend. And I was like, eh, time out. Hold on, hold the deposit. I said, this is what I want you to do. Ruth's Chris or Chris Ruth's, whatever it was, was nearby. And she said it was someplace she had always thought about going. I said, and I want you to book a reservation. 
And I want you either by yourself or with your girlfriends to start going like once a month. I said, I want you to go there so often that when a date finally takes you there, the maitre d' says, oh ma'am, would you like your regular table or would you like to sit someplace else with your date? And I said, don't wait for somebody else to show you a wonderful experience. Show yourself a wonderful experience. So when you do meet someone, you can tell them about all the wonderful experiences you've already been having. And then if he wants to uh, uh, enhance your life, he's going to have to find something that at least matches what you've already been doing. And if he's like my mom said, find a thinking man, get a thinking man. If he's a thinking man, he's going to want to try to one up you. So he's going to try to find another star on that restaurant. He's going to be looking for Michelin. Not the tire. If you don't know what that is, look that up. So make sure you are taking really good care of yourself and not waiting again, external, that external motivation, that external gratification. Bring it for yourself. Do it for yourself. Now, we're going to talk about finding that next partner or looking or just dating or whatever it is for you. Make a list. Um, I, I was I listened to Viola Davis's book when it first came out, and then she talked about it again on Oprah. And if you didn't hear it, I, I actually wrote some of it down. But make a list of what you want in a potential partner, whether you call it a potential partner characteristic or your ideal partner list. And there's no such thing as it being crazy or outlandish. It's your list. And you get to put on your list, whatever the heck you want on your list. Do not let somebody tell you, oh girl, that's ridiculous. Your standards are too high. You expect too much. That's your problem. Mm. I remember getting to a point where I should have been expecting a heck of a lot more because you know what happened when I expected less? I got exactly what I was expecting. So put your list together. And Viola Davis's list was so specific. She said, she said, her girlfriend told her to tell God exactly what she wanted, that she needed to pray. She said she got down on her knees. She said, I want a black man who is from the South. Who does that? I want a black man who's from the South. She said, probably one who has been married before and has kids. She said she didn't want anybody that was going to put uh, pressure on her to have kids. So she wanted somebody who had already been married, who had already had kids. She wanted somebody who had either been an actor or understood the artistic community, understood the artistic community. She wanted somebody that went to church and that loved God. And then she said she signed her letter and went on with it. And when you meet, see her and her husband, if you look up her husband and read stories about them, every single thing on that list is what that man has. Part of the problem is we don't even know what we want. We're just kind of out here. Oh, I'm just out here looking. I don't really know. I'll know when I see it. That's okay if it's like a pair of shoes, maybe. And it might even be okay for a car. And I would even tell you it'll work for a house. I'll know it when I see it. I couldn't have picked this house. If somebody had said, you're going to have 100 palm trees, did I pick that? I was moving here from Chicago. I couldn't even have imagined 100 palm trees. So I, but I knew it when I saw it, when my sister sent me the picture, we knew it. I knew it when I saw it with a man, you should do a little bit more fine tuning on that one. You should have a couple of things in line in mind when you're looking for a partner, a mate, uh, 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 uh I'm not going to say a better half. I'm going to say another whole, cause I don't believe in everybody brings a half to the party. You bring your whole you and he brings his whole you and together you make two holes. You make, you, you make another thing. So figure out what that looks like. And, and that's why I said you need some space between that last relationship ending and you being comfortable being single because it is in that space where you get really good at being single you, where you start realizing what you like, the things that make you smile, the things that just bring you joy, the kind of experiences you want to have, the places you like to travel and the things you want to do, the quality of the things that you want in your life. And when you start realizing that, it's going to help you fine tune what kind of man, what kind of partner or woman in, 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 in whoever's case, I don't want to assume who does what with whom, but whomever, whatever, them, they, he, her, she, them, theirs, whatever that person is for you, it's going to help you fine tune what you want from them. 
What are your expectations? What are your desires? What are your desires? My mother used to tell us, you don't want somebody that needs you. You want somebody that desires you. She said, because neediness gets heavy. Somebody that needs you all the time. It sounds good though. It sounds romantic. You know, when people say, oh, I really need you. Um, it, it sounds romantic. And, and, and just for that purpose, I get it. But really be careful that when somebody's talking about needing you or you talking to someone about how you need them, check yourself for a minute and find out. Because my thing is, I was already eating. I've already had clothes and transportation. I already had a roof over my head. So my needs are met. But my mom said, when somebody desires you, now that right, I just got goosebumps just saying it. I just got goosebumps. Every To be desired? Are you kidding? <laughs> I would leave y'all on this podcast right now. Anyway, so Viola did exactly what I'm asking you to do. Figure out what you want your partner to look like and write that down and be really clear and be excited about that. Because that way, when you meet someone and you realize that's them, it's just manifested. Then number 10 is take it slow. When you do meet that person, you don't need to rush. You don't need to rush. You don't need to rush because you are so comfortable and good at being you and being in your skin and enjoying your life and loving all over you that you can take your time and let them get used to seeing that. See, you taking your time at that point is not just about you. It's about giving them time because you don't know where they've been, who they've been with, what they've been doing, what their experiences are. It gives them time to see the, your standards, your expectations, how you love on yourself, how you love them. And it also allows you to peep them the same way. Did they know what they were looking for before they met you? Did they have a list that you may be filling? So it gives you some time to get past that kind of euphoria, that, that immediate spark that you know we all feel initially and just pay attention. And it doesn't mean that that's still going to you know, be your forever thing, but they should get better. You, you want to create a, a life for yourself where those relationships continue to get better. And if you do part, you can part ways and be okay with it because you both understand what we had was nice, but it's not really working for both of us. So if one of us isn't happy, then both of us, neither one of us really is going to be happy that long if one of us isn't really happy. So be okay with that. So, so those are, those are my 10. I want to check and see if anybody wants to, to jump in and share anything. Somebody who's, I know I got a couple of folks on here, at least one, um, who, who have been through some things and what was it like looking for that next partner? Uh Oh, my mom might jump on here. I just called her out, but we'll see what, what has it been like looking for that next partner after losing your partner, whether it was from, you know, being widowed or if it was a breakup, anybody want to share? I see thumbs up going up. Who popped up here? There she goes. Hello, can we hear you? I see you, but I let me see. Say something so I can see if we can hear you. But can now you hear, I hear me you. now? Yep, I hear you now. Oh, good evening, everybody. And but Ms. turn Monica. turn down turn down whatever's in the background. Oh 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 oh! oh I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> Miss Monica, how are you, you devil? <laughs> um, well, I've been divorced and I've lost someone. So, um, yeah, I can see. As far as being single and feeling comfortable with it, um, the loss of my husband, I think, was the hardest for me in terms of uh, being comfortable with being by yourself. Um, it, it took a few years um, and people were always trying to fix me up because everybody or well, a lot of women think that, you know, we, we should all be with someone. Mm -hmm. But um, I think for the most part, you know, when you're ready uh, to meet someone, because I mean, I, for the first two or three years, if I heard a song, it would start me crying. So that's not very romantic on a right. date. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, here she go crying again. Stevie Wonder came on and I lost yeah, her. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I was ready, I, I kind of eased into it. Um, I, w I went online, and I, a lot of folks are afraid of that. But it just happened that um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's not true. Well, the, the, first, one, the yeah. first person. Okay, that yeah, I dated. So my mother has gotten pretty good at dating, but I yeah. am a professional online um, profile writer. Right. I, mean, I am. <laughs> I am so good at writing online profiles. But tell us your first your first my first foray date into dating after after Perry died. After many years was with a gentleman who I grew up with. We started kindergarten together. And we happened to see each other at an elementary school reunion. And a year or so later, I got a call that he wanted my phone number. So I called him and we talked and, you know, talked for a few months because we lived quite a distance from each other. And we started dating each other. Now, it was very comfortable um, because he knew my family. He had growing up. We went to his house and his sisters and I played. He came to my house and he and my brother, you know, were friends. Um, so we knew each other. We knew our community. Um, we grew up with some of the same um, life lessons. So we dated for about two years. And um, at some point I realized, you know, this, you know, was not, it just wasn't working. It wasn't um it wasn't as comfortable as I wanted she it to be. She let him down time. gently. We'll, we'll put it. So, yeah, she let him right. down gently. But it was okay. We had a talk yeah. on the phone and, you know, um, and to this day, I mean, Still I friends. spoke to him about three weeks ago. So, um, but it's a whole different, you know, we're, we're back to being neighborhood uh, friends now. So mm -hmm. that was good. And then my second guy that I started dating about two years ago now, matter of fact, it's two years this month. Okay. Um, I met online on one of the sites, date sites. So, and so um, I'll have to do a whole, I don't know how I'm going to squeeze it into divorce is not a destination, but the role reversal when you live with one of your parents and they're dating. Um, <laughs> and so when she started it's dating, real. dating, yeah, when she started dating him, she had that day where she goes, oh, well, I'm going to go over to his place. And I said, ah, uh -uh, uh -uh, we ain't met him. <laughs> and I heard her come out my mouth. I said to my mother, we have not met this man. He has to come over here and meet the family. And so he did. He had to come over and meet him. And I said, because I need to, like I said, if I got to send my little hovercraft, my little drone, following him around for a day or two. But he did. And and and, and that's real. So that's a whole nother thing on just dating and safety and everything. I see Monica yeah. has popped back up here. Yeah, no, it is real. And mm -hmm. it's good to have uh, safety. I mean, yep. even when Lisa was dating, um, I would tell her, you know, you call me, you let me know where you are, what his I name is. I used to send is. her pictures. She used to send me pictures. And I don't think that should stop just because mm -hmm. you're older, because there are crazy people out there. Yep. Um, this guy and Christine, I have been talking Ms. on Ms. the phone. Jackie, Ms. Jackie, yes. I, got a question. I got a question for you, Miss Jackie, okay? Okay. So I love you. You know, I love you, girl. <laughs> um, but see, you know, I'm a detective, so my, my psyche, my spidey sense tells me right. that you got your sexy back <laughs> and you got this sexy thing going on. So that's why you out here just killing it out here. See, that's what I oh, think. Don't yeah, hate the well, player. You know what? I feel good about myself. Yeah. And See, that's thing, it. I can tell yeah, it. I can tell yeah. it. And that's what I wanted myself. to hear. Um, yes. I feel comfortable with this gentleman. And you know, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. He's not perfect. But the thing I like about him is he's adventurous. He likes doing things like museums and, um, you know, um, live music. And, you know, he, he likes doing things. Yeah, and, uh, I, like I think that's a yeah. part like of growing I, I, up and getting older is to keep active and to keep right. interested in things. Yeah, so, Monica, uh, people will say, I'll say, oh, I live with my mom. And she's, I can, I can tell your age, mom. Yeah. <laughs> she's 76. And they go, wow. oh, now y'all can't see me. I'm doing that little old lady scrunch thing. Like, oh, you mommy. And I'm like, uh-uh, no, don't cry for her or Argentina. Because right now she's at her man's house. I will not see her until Tuesday. So don't, I'm not, I'm not taking, I'm not taking her vitamins or meds down the hall and bringing, and bringing her her protein drink. No, I'm I mean, talking, we, you know, I'm we texting her saying. And do our little two yeah. step and he belongs to the, um, uh, Los Angeles County Museum of Art at uh, in San Diego, yeah. I mean, LA. LA. And, you know, um, he just, you know, he's very, he's interesting. He's but see, interesting that's what person. I was, that's what I was gonna, I was gonna say to tie that back because when you talk about what your partner 
you know, what you want your partner to be like. And it doesn't matter what the age is. It doesn't matter what decade right. you're living in. It's somebody that enhances your life. And one of right. the things that I liked about this gentleman, that her first one, we had already had a family meeting, Monica. He, we loved yeah. him, but he was not going to make it with my mom. My um, daughters, <laughs> and, yeah. my daughters, uh, her my sister and a girlfriend. Matter and my fact, girlfriend, Wanda. they had all yeah. had a meeting to yeah. let me know that this guy He's was not, not going to make it. When she went to church <laughs> with him and a church member asked him if she was his daughter and they're the same age, that's yeah. not good because Ooh, my mother is youthful. No. So, so you need to know you, you need to know you got energy. You have a youthful spirit. You have an adventurous, yeah. you know, mindset yeah. about life. My mother's the one that plans all our excursions when we go on vacation. So we got like seven excursions doing a, you know, so you need somebody that one is going to have that kind of energy. But what I liked about mm -hmm. Mr. Clint is he was saying things to her like, okay, well, we're going to do such and such this weekend, bring your sneakers because right. we're going to be yeah. walking. Or we're going to be going to this museum. And she wasn't against museums, but that wasn't something that she used right. to do. But right. now, but it's so he's enhancing her life. Right. Yeah. And she enhances yeah. his. Yeah. And so yeah. there's this mutual enhancement going on. So folks, when you are at that point where you're ready to start dating, first of all, don't let somebody age you out of life. I think we're here to have relationships. I think you have a relationship with a higher power, but he gave us right. each other to practice on. Otherwise right. he just set right. us all on our own planets. So we're <laughs> supposed to be down here trying to figure out how to be in healthy relationship with another human or several humans. And so I don't think you age out of that. And my mom is, is, is a really good example of that. And, and Monica, and I know you're in a relationship that is enhancing. Um, I know you enhancing whoever you with, so he, he don't have a choice. <laughs> Girl, he's so enhanced, it ain't even funny. Okay, that brother, let me tell you, everywhere he go, people need sunglasses because he's shining, shining, shining. Okay? I know that's the I, truth. Monica, I know. And we have to I, have a talk one time because, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's been a whole bunch of buffing going on here when yeah. this relationship started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's we, needed some, we needed some buffing up. Uh, that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and even even with that, when you're with the right person or a right person, even having that conversation is possible because That's the right. person yeah. knows That's you. Right. For they sure. Know, yeah, For sure. They know that you yeah. have their best interest at heart. Right. And that you, For sure. Well, you know what? It's right back to Monica. Your girlfriend's husband told her what he wanted. Right. Yeah. And it's one thing. It's one thing to try it and say, this ain't for me. Let me tell you why. It's another mm -hmm. thing to not even try it. Yeah. There you yeah. go. You know, there you go. It's another there thing because you, you can go a long way with a try that just doesn't work for you. Cause at least they go, you know what? I'm not mad at you. I, it itched too much. Yeah. I get it. You ingrown yeah. hairs. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's all real. People Girl, just like, get oh some God. coconut oil. It heals yeah. the little coconut oil heals it. And you just, fine. Okay. She just killed me. She just killed. I'm allergic to coconut. She just killed, but okay. probably olive oil might work or Avocado, olive, any, any is, kind of oil, sweetie, tea tree, coconut, yep. olive oil, it, Look, any of those are perfect. The thing is, experiment. Try That's it. it. Try That's it. it. It's like my niece, That's my sister it. used to tell my niece when she said, but I don't like that, mommy. I don't like it. She said, you haven't even tasted it yet. <laughs> So I look, thank you everybody. Cause this has been good. This is, this is, like I said, this was a fun show for me because back to single, I am so good at being single. I'm a great partner, but I'm a great date to me. Um, I have had Friday date nights for years when I was single, me and my sister would call and be like, what you drinking? And we got our wine or our non-alcoholic and grapes and cheese. And I put it out on my nice China and put some pajamas on and do movie night. And that was me by myself. Because if I can't be a good date to me, how am I going to know when I'm having a good date with somebody else? Amen. Amen. Right. So, folks, yeah. those are your those are your ten things. We're gonna we're going to learn from whatever it is that we just went through. We're gonna let go of that other person because that 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 period of our life is over. It, it served its purpose. Forgive them. Forgive you. Take really good care of yourself, which could include a good waxing. We don't know yet. Um, get your life in order. Clean up your house. Get your finances together. Remodel a space in your room. Get it together. Make it look different than it did when you were living there with somebody or when they were coming over. Switch some stuff up. Move the furniture around. Find a hobby, a new one, or get an old one back. Enjoy your singleness because it is a wonderful, wonderful, empowering opportunity for you to be single. 
and make a list of what you want in a partner. Make a list of what you want in a partner and, and fine tune that list. Every time something happens and you go, you know what else I want? Add to that list. This is your list. You get to add to it and take it slow. Take it slow and enjoy your singleness and enjoy when you meet somebody or bodies or peoples that you want to start spending time with to see, hmm, let me see how I feel about maybe partnering up with somebody again. All right, folks, have a great rest of your Thursday. I will see you back here next week. I'm going to be starting a four-part series on attachment styles. So I'm starting, and, and I think I've got one more week before that starts. So attachment styles, this is comes from our childhood and how we're raised, but this is how we deal in relationships. So you may learn why some of your relationships worked and some of them didn't. Um, the four attachment styles I'm going to be looking at is secure attachment, which is about 50% of the population is operates from a secure attachment. I could pretty much say these two ladies secure attachment, hundred um, percent. And then we have uh, anxious attachment, avoidant attachment, and then there's one called anxious avoidant, which is also described as fearful um, or disorganized. So, so Lisa, they, they, it's not an attachment called clearly in denial and need to wake the hell up. It ain't one of them attachments. Yeah. That's going to be under avoidant yeah. or anxious avoidant. Yes. <laughs> clearly, uh, okay. clearly should not be trying to engage in no clearly form with another has human. no business dating attachment. Yeah. They need to nope. be let up mm -hmm. too. Okay. Clearly should be detached from most other humans. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So oh, that, that is funny. So, so this will be interesting because when you hear these characteristics and I'm going to give people the link so you can do a free assessment. And what's beautiful about this, you can do an assessment for yourself and you can do an assessment for an ex because you know, the characteristics you were dealing with. So you can check a box and go, yep, that was them. That was them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nope. That wasn't. And when you get done, you will have your assessment, your profile, and you will have your exes. And then you're going to be like, oh Lord, I know why this didn't work. Like I got, now I got some science behind why this didn't work. So stay tuned for those, uh, my four part series on attachment styles. Until then, I will see you next week. Catch Monica on Tuesday night at five, Monica. Tuesday night, 8 p.m. EST, 5 p.m. PCT. All right, folks, you heard it here. Next week, she's doing. Ooh, the date, the date, the date has got P in, in it. it. <laughs> yeah. I don't even need that to say that now. Pee in it, poop in it, everything in it, but it's I'm going to show you how to clean it up. All right, everybody, bring your, bring your galoshes and your swimsuit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and put a cap on because you don't want to get your hair in this. See everybody <laughs> next week. Created live on Fireside.